I'm Allison, and this is my dog, and we live in a tiny house, in an even tinier trailer, traveling the country, taking hikes, and this week, rather than wear an already well-worn tourist route around the top of Glen Canyon, I decided to take a path less traveled and see a 16-mile stretch of the Colorado River from Lake Powell to the Grand Canyon from inside the canyon, where, instead of contending with tourists, we'll confront a 105-degree heat, a few creepy growlies, and somehow, ice-cold water. I started this trip by buying a seat on a boat that leaves a few times a day from the boat launch at Lee's Ferry. For 75 doll hairs, the boat drops paddlers at or near any of a multitude of stops and campsites along the river. But I went all the way up to the last stop at the Glen Canyon Dam, myself and two other brave souls who were staying the night. All right, well, here we go. Y'all have a good one. Have a good night. That's amazing, you're camping out. Well, yeah, I prepared mentally for a long day, so let's do it. Well, we'll see if I get back before dark. <laughs> All right, this is Colorado River. We got the dam right back there. And we're, we're doing this. We're 16 miles out. It's gonna be a long day. Let's do this thing. Right off the bat, I feel like I should pass along a few warnings. First of all, you'll notice me wearing my life vest throughout this whole trip. And that's because even though I am a good swimmer, I doubt my abilities with a boat propeller stuck in my head. And you'll be sharing the river with lots of motorboats, so keep to the shallows to either side of the river whenever you can. And when you do stay to the side, remember that the outer current of river bends is the swiftest. The current here isn't all that fast, save for a few easily avoidable patches, and what is fast is merely a fun pace on a paddleboard. I should also warn you to bring way more water than you think you need. Like, a lot. Drink as much as you can as often as you can. It's okay, there are plenty of bathrooms at several campsites throughout the canyon. There's almost no shade here and the river water isn't safe to drink, save for two natural springs located in the first couple miles of your descent. On this day, as the temperature climbed to 105, I drank three liters of water and still ran out in my last mile. Then I drank another liter in the car on the way back home. At no time was I hot or sweaty because I took a cold dip in the water, but the heat can still kill here. And speaking of that cold water, the water of the Colorado River comes out of the bottom of the Glen Canyon Dam, hundreds of feet from the surface of Lake Powell, hundreds of feet from any sunlight, which means it's in the mid 40s even during the hottest parts of the summer. That's four degrees Celsius for my friends who use the metric system. So while there's an easy resource right under your feet to keep your core from overheating, it's also dangerous to be in it too long. So I was told to do this quick little hike to see some petroglyphs. I was told it was like five minutes. We've been walking for about two and a half minutes. I think we're halfway there. Lord almighty, it is hot. Whew. It's about 105 degrees today. It was much cooler on the water. So we're gonna hurry up with this hike here. Hey, cactus. Ooh, that sun. I'm so glad I'm having one of my better days where I remember to put on sunscreen and I remember to reapply sunscreen. Very important. If I only put it on once, I'd be dead burnt to a crisp somewhere on shore back a couple of miles.
the dam, Horseshoe Bend is about halfway back to Lee's Ferry. While the bend is an absolute tourist trap above with hundreds of people jostling for photos, it's downright peaceful 1,000 feet below. We are in the horseshoe of Horseshoe Bend, right in the bend. We are just below the people. Hi, people. Are you gonna wave at me? I don't think they can see me waving. I can't see them waving. I don't know if you can see that. They're pretty tiny. Oh my gosh, it's hot. Let's go. Downstream, we paddled ten and a half miles, and we found shade. Hooray! It's lovely. As much as I want to get back, I don't want to leave the shade. Hello, phone. Also, can confirm there are rattlesnakes, so watch for that. They do swim. Can also confirm. Luckily, the sighting was not made while I was also swimming or we might be waiting for a boat back. <laughs> At the end, I'd say, oh, about the last mile and a half, or around 3 to 4 p.m.-ish, the wind picked up with gusts around 10 miles an hour, which was enough to make the water a little too choppy for my liking. Actually, so choppy, I couldn't even reach for a camera safely to show you. Unless my hands were on the paddle working, I was being blown back upstream. The wind didn't last long or gust hard, but I could have been in a dangerous and exhausting situation had conditions been any worse. So if you plan to make this a long day trip as well, I'd recommend starting as early in the day as you can possibly get a boat to avoid that afternoon wind. Hot. I started at 10 a.m. and I would call that about as close to being too late as I was comfortable being. I arrived back around 5 o'clock, 5.30, making for about a seven, seven and a half hour day. Which I was told by locals that I had met near the boat launch was a very fast time. However, if I didn't have a dog waiting back at camp to get home to, I would have stayed the night and stretched this trip into two days. But I was glad to be back anyway and to take a quick, cold soak before my drive home with the top down. Y'all, we did it. Thank <laughs> you.